All right, guys. So, um, welcome back to another episode of Everything Business. Right, manufacturing account is another is one of the topics right that will come this year, right on the paper, and as you can see, and so today I'll be looking at a manufacturing account question from 2016, right? For those persons who have not seen my other manufacturing account questions. Um, at the end of this video, I will be leaving um, the the video tiles that you can just click on, right? And you will see other workout um, of manufacturing account. All right. So just stay tuned. All right. So let us get into this question, right? For persons who may not know what a manufacturing account is, a manufacturing account is simply an account that shows the total cost of producing a product. Or an item you get what i'm saying so with the manufacturing account all you're doing is adding up cost right you're trying to find out how much it costs me to make this particular product right and that's all that the manufacturing account is right um there's a tutorial video on manufacturing account that i have that i will leave at the end of this video just the same right and also for other past papers um that i have worked out for manufacturing that i will leave at the end of this video right so please watch to the end of the video and just hit that like button, right? Leave a comment, man. Just leave an encouraging word. If you like what me, I do. Leave a comment, a, an encouraging word. Hit that like button. You know what I mean? And let's do this. All right? So the first thing you do when you see a question, as I always tell you, is to read through the question. Right? So don't get panicky. Don't, don't, don't freak out or anything. Just read through the question. Right? So it says, and this was back in the times when um, they had sections. So Little People Furnishings is a manufacturer of table and chair sets for toddlers. And the following is a list of revenue and expenses for the year ended 31st of December 2015. Right? So they give us the information here. We have sales. We have raw materials at the start of the year. We have um, purchases of raw materials during the year. We have finished um, table sets at the start of the year. We have factory workers' wages. We have office worker wages we have plant and machinery at cost then you have provision for depreciation for plant and machinery fixtures and fitting at cost and you have provision for depreciation on fixtures and fittings and you have the repairs to fixtures and fittings they provide us with some additional information we call them footnotes right important that you what you read these raw materials at the end of the, of the period was ninety thousand. finished um table and chair sets at the end of the period was what 12,700 all right um a license fee of two dollars per set is to be paid for each of the 12,900 sets manufactured right that is important information that we will use plant and machinery are to be depreciated 7,360 for the year Fixtures and fittings are to be depreciated at 20% per annum using the straight line method, right? All other expenses, sorry, all expenses related to fixtures and fittings are to be allocated 40% to the factory, 60% to administration, right? Very important, all right? So what, what, what are we supposed to do now? Let's go over here and see. They said prepare the manufacturing account for the year ended the 31st of December. And you must show clearly cost of raw material use, prime cost, and production cost, right? So, put this thing over here, so. All right, good. So, we start with our heading, little people furnishing, um, manufacturing a cone for the year ended. They put the date, right? Now, if you are familiar, if you're not familiar with the manufacturing account format, then I would suggest that you go and watch my tutorial video on manufacturing account because you probably won't understand what we are doing here, right? So if you don't watch that as yet, go and watch that video. As I said, it's at the end of this video, right? So you can probably skip to the end of the video. You will see the tile. You just click on it, watch it, and then you come back to this, all right? All right. So the opening stock of raw material is what we start with first in our format and that it was given to us, right? was given to us here, $5,000, right? 
Then you have your ad, your purchases of raw materials, which was also given one hundred and twelve thousand. When you add both of them, you get what is called the cost of raw materials available. And then one of the only things that you will subtract, right? You have two things that you will subtract in the manufacturing account, which is closing stock of raw materials and closing work in progress. So the first one, closing stock of raw materials, ninety thousand, which is stated down here in the footnote, ninety thousand. Right, you subtract it to get the cost of raw materials used, which is one of the things that they had asked us for. Cost of raw materials used. So, in an effort to clearly show, I uh, I put the cost of raw material used in all caps. Right, so you can choose to to underline it. You can choose to you know use a different. Well, I'm not going to tell you to use a different color ink, but you can put the, the the number like this I. You can probably put it at the side here to show right that this is it to clearly show it and then now we're going to add other direct costs so factory workers wages would be a direct cost in some textbooks or in some questions they would say production workers pay it's the same thing right so it's a direct cost you add a direct cost um to the cost of raw material use and you get what is called the prime cost so the prime cost is a summation or it's a total of all your direct costs Right, so you have direct material, right? You have direct labor, you have um, direct expenses. You get what I'm saying? So this would be direct labor. This factory workers, yeah, it would be direct labor. An example of a direct expenses would be like if you have depreciation of the, the production machine, that would be a direct expense. You know and I mean, or if you have to do repairs on the production machine, that would be a direct expense. But it's not there in, in, in this. It did not explicitly state that, so we're not going to assume that. So then we add our indirect costs, our factory overheads, as they are called sometimes. And then we have depreciation for plant and machinery, which is given here very clearly. Right? So you just put the 7,360. And then you have fixtures and fittings. <coughs> fixtures and fittings, you would have to calculate that. Right? Now, when you're calculating fixtures and fittings, you have to be very careful. So, <coughs> excuse me, it says 20% per annum. Right, fixtures and fittings are to be depreciated at 20% per annum using the straight line method. Now they give you the information, right? Like the, the, the cost of fixtures and fitting and the cost of machining, right? All of these information um, would become necessary if you were asked to calculate depreciation using the reducing balance method, right? I mean the provision for depreciation and all of that, right? It would be necessary if you were asked to do the the, the, the reducing balance method, right? They didn't have to put it there, but they put it there. So when we're talking about the straight line method, we're calculating um, that depreciation on cost, right? So it's 20% of 27,500 because we're calculating it on cost, right? And if you're not familiar with calculation or calculating depreciation, then you may want to check out my um, my tutorial on depreciation, um, you know, on my on, on this channel so what, what what you can do i'll put another tile at the end of the video so stay tuned lots of things at the end of the video All right um so it's it, it also says which is very important that all expenses relating right all expenses relating to fixtures and fittings are to be allocated 40 percent to the factory which would be an indirect cost which would be the overhead that we would use here and then 60 percent to administration we won't use that here we would use that in the in the in the income statement right so let's pay attention to that so let's look at the working out so it's 40 percent multiplied by i'm sorry it is 20 percent multiplied by 27,500. zoom that up a little bit more so you can see it. right 27,500. right and then after you get that you have to find 40% of the figure that you get. You're going to get um, just calculate it. Yeah. So after you calculate 20%, right? All right. So I'll pull out the calculator now. All right? So you're going to calculate 20%. So in the calculator, you're going to type 20 
divide by 100, right? And you don't have to type 20 divided by 100 now, right? For those of you who have been watching my tutorials and my working out, you should know that 20% is the same as 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Yes, so 20% multiply by 27,500, right? No, this is in the way. Yeah. Alright, so 27,500, you will get what? 5,500. But now it says that 40% of that must be used here. So you're going to times it by 40%, which is the same as 0.4, right? And that is how I got the 2,200 here. Alright? And then now we move on to fixtures and fittings, right? It says repairs to fixtures and fittings. See it here? Repairs to fixtures and fittings, right? Um, because it says all expenses related to fixtures and fittings are to be allocated 40% to the factory and 60% to the administration or to the office, you have to now find 40% of the 4,000, which is 1,600. So that's all of our overheads. So you add up your overheads, right? And you get 11,160. Now you have to remember not to subtract here. Now. So you have to add. 11,160 to the 75,000 and you get the 86,160 and that is your production cost, All right? CD, which is what they had asked for. And that is 11 marks, right? That wasn't that difficult, if you ask me. It wasn't that difficult. This part of the question, part A, I would say it's part A is probably, probably a four. Yeah, seriously, probably a four. If you are familiar with manufacturing account, probably a four, right? The difficult part comes in right down in the overhead section when you have to remember to apportion the amount for fixtures and fittings. All right, let's look at the other part of the question quickly. So it says prepare, prepare, um, move this back over here. Prepare the income statement for the year ended the 31st of December. And you must clearly show the gross income and the net income. All right. So again, simple thing, right? You start with your headings, right? Yeah. People should know how an income statement is done, right? You guys should know that. And if you don't know how an income statement is done, then you need to check out my video on income statement. I have a tutorial on income statement that I will I will try to leave. Don't if I have enough space on at the end of the video. But I'll try to leave it here so you can just watch till the end of the video and see what happens. Um, so the sales of finished goods is what you'll start with, right? And how they do this now, I like to be struggling back and forth. So the sales of finished goods, see it here 278,800, right? It's right there. Then your less cost of sales. Then I have the opening stock of finished goods. The opening stock of finished goods, it was given, see it here. Finished chair set, 66,000, yeah, All right? And then we add production cost, right? Add production cost, right? Which is 86,160. Um, in the regular income statement, you would have purchases. You would add purchases. Um, in manufacturing accounts, you know, most times they don't have purchases because they make their products. Right, there are instances where manufacturing accounts run out and may have to purchase some finished goods from another manufacturer. Right, it would come here as well. Right, but your other production cost, you get 152,160. Right, when I did this question, I, I had forgotten to put in the production cost, so I just had to improvise here. So it, it looks kind of jumbled. I ask you to forgive me. Right, then you list your closing stock of finished goods you may be wondering where i get this closing stock from it's right down here see there 12,700 right right and so you get this figure 139,460 which is the cost of sales that you're now going to subtract from your sales of finished goods to get your gross income which is 139,340 which is one of the things that they had asked for boom you get that then now you're going to subtract your expenses in the manufacturing account, expenses are divided, right? The expenses section are divided into three into three parts. You have administrative expenses, you have 
selling and distribution expenses and you have um um financial charges right so we don't have any financial charges so don't worry about that you have the administrative expenses which is the office workers wages and you may be wondering where i get that from or if you're wondering where i get it from then see it here office worker wages thirty five thousand, right then you have depreciation fixtures and fittings the remainder we had used 40 percent um we had used 40 percent here see it here yeah the other 60 percent we use here 2400 then we have the licensing fee which would be a fee associated with selling and distributing your product so it goes under selling and distribution expense so it's two times 12,900 right yeah because it's two dollars you have to pay right so in total what you would pay is what 25,800 so you add up all of these expenses right you get 63,200 and then you subtract it from your gross income to get your net income, which is 76,140. Right? They can't say gross profit or net profit, but it's just because they say they use the word income. That's why I use the word income. All right. And that's seven marks. Easy. Right. This question, another, I would say this is, I would say this is probably a four if you know how to do manufacturing of Let's say five. Right. Now look at this last part now. Right. It says during the year, right they manufactured 12,900 tables and chair sets they're asking us to calculate the unit cost of production for the year now unit cost of production it simply means how much it costs to make one that's what unit cost of production unit means single so how much it costs to make one um table and chair set right so the formula is unit cost of production um okay yeah this unit cost of production it should be off right is the production cost divided by the number of units that's the formula so the production cost was 86,160 and now you divide it by the the amount of units which is 12,900 and you get six dollars 68 cents per unit so it means that it costs six dollars 68 cents to make one table and chair set yeah and that's it um this question overall, I would give this question overall maybe a six in terms of difficulty, right? An average six, you know, well, it wouldn't be an average kind of, unless I would give this part maybe like a six or a seven in terms of difficulty, but, right? Guys, thank you. Um, remember to like, leave a, click that, that, that like button, man, and, and, and leave a comment, man. You know what I mean? Right? And push the video forward, right? See you in the next one.